Hello, I'm Charlize and welcome to another episode of Book Talk. Today we're going to be discussing Emerald Green by Kirsten Gear. Now this is the third book in the Ruby Red trilogy. The first book is Ruby Red, the second book is Sapphire Blue. I have a book talk on both of these books and I would not recommend watching this video unless you have read all three books because I'm going to be getting into only spoilers. I would recommend this series if you're looking for a fun read that you can just get addicted to. You can click on the cover of Ruby Red to go to that review because it is a spoiler free review for if you have not yet read the books. So if you want to find more about this series then go to that review. So bye for now if you have not yet read any of the books and if you haven't read all of them. Only stay if you have read all three books. So yes, go read them and then come back and discuss with us. Bye bye! So the starting of this book was a little bit different to the other two. Sapphire Blue left off exactly where Ruby Red left off, whereas Emerald Green kind of didn't pick up exactly where it left off. Like, obviously there's always the prologue and the epilogue that's Lucy and Paul, but this time after that it was a bit different and it was... Oh, I hated the start. The start annoyed me so much. Out of the whole book, the start... Like, that was the worst part of the book, was the start, because Gwen is like, Oh, he doesn't love me, he was just faking it, oh, I'm so heartbroken, and she's talking about how heartbroken she is, and it's been two weeks. It has been two weeks. Between these two books, it was two weeks. Like, I think this whole series takes place over, like, a month at the most. I think less than that, and that's the weird thing about this series, is, like, you feel like more time's gone by, because you read, like what, 300 pages and it's been like two days and you're like, what? <laughs> and it's just really weird. And I guess it's because it's like time travel and everything, but still, they seem to get a lot done in like one day and I don't understand that. But anyway, that makes it action packed, but like you could have made it over a more big span of time and then Gwen wouldn't have been as annoying. And yeah, this book, Gwen really annoyed me and the Insta Love really annoyed me. I didn't like, the first book was good because there was none of that. Like, most of the book was, there was no Gideon. But then we get this insta-love thing going and it really annoyed me. And, like, towards the end I was kind of alright with it. And I was hoping that Gideon would have some sort of reason behind why he's been acting like such a freaking asshole in this book to her. And how he's, like, how he said that. And I knew there had to be a reason and... There was a reason, luckily, and she didn't leave it till the very end of the book either, which is good. We found out about halfway through the book what his reasoning was, which I did like. I did like his reasoning having to do with the whole immortality thing. I did like how it was to keep her safe and everything with how the only way she can die is if she kills herself for love or something, but yeah, that, that's really... I didn't see that immortality thing coming at all. Did you guys see that coming? Because I didn't see that coming at all, like, I didn't see that coming. But, Gideon never ended up having any powers and that really annoyed me because I swear, he was, he was reading minds in the first book. What happened to that? What happened to that? I wasn't imagining that. Christine wasn't imagining it. We weren't imagining it. We were not imagining it. That happened and it never got brought up again and I was like, waiting for it and it never came. Can we just discuss Xermius? I don't know how to say his name, I think that's not how you say it, but Xermius the, gar the gargoyle, all these tabs, there's four, no there's, yeah there's four of them. All of them are just funny parts of Xermius, that's all what these are, they're just funny bits that Xermius said and I will read you all of them because that's why I tabbed them. Um, first one is, uh, when he was like eating something and he's like and Gwen's like but you can't eat at all and Xermius is like no idea of anything but always giving us the benefit of her opinion won't even let me eat a little pigeon you can't eat a pigeon I repeated you're a ghost I'm a demon I can eat anything I like I once ate a whole priest vestments and all why are you looking at me so incredulously <laughs> so he's eating like a pigeon and Gwen's like you're a ghost, you can't eat pigeons. And he's like, how many times do I have to tell you I'm a demon, not a ghost? Get it right, jeez. And then he's like, I hate, I once ate a whole priest that I just, I laughed so many times throughout this book just because of Xermius' like little smart ass remarks throughout the whole book. Another one is where Gwen keeps forgetting 
how many greats there are in the great 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 uncle Hugh and Zermius is like you get the number of greats different every time if I were you I'd just say my fat forefather and I don't know <laughs> why that made me laugh so much but just my fat forefather that made me laugh a lot and then there is <laughs> then there is this whole thing with James because James and Zermius kind of like hate each other especially Zermius hates James and um He's like, one more word and I'll eat you. It's just so sudden, like James is just talking, he's like, one more word and I'll eat you. And then the best bit, it has to be where he like, starts narrating what people are doing, like, he just does this narration, like, when, um, when he walks in on like, Gwen and Gideon and he's like, um, and there was a deathly silence in the room, Zeremias whispered in from the chandelier, all eyes rested on the girl in the piss yellow blouse. <laughs> Because she's in like her school uniform and he's like, all eyes rested on the girl in the piss yellow blouse. And I laughed for like a good 10 minutes at that. And then it keeps going a bit and he's like, even the shadows on the walls were silent while the two of them looked at each other as if they just sat on a whoopee cushion. Like what? <laughs> See, Xermius makes this book so much more enjoyable and it's already like a fun book to begin with. So Xermius, I, it's, that's what made, I think this book has been my favourite out of all three. Only just, like, all of them are kind of equal. I gave all of them four stars, by the way. Um, all three of the books are four stars. But I think this one is just narrowly my favourite. Just, just. Now let's talk about how Gwen died about halfway through the book. Just died, you know, just... I <laughs> didn't know what was going to happen. I knew she, like, wouldn't just die, but... Okay, she she gets run through with the sword, and I'm like, wow, um, that sounded pretty brutal. She's probably dying or something, that <laughs> she dies, and she's like hovering over her body, like she can see her own body not breathing, and I was like, what the hell? And then for a second I thought she was going to come back as a ghost, and like that was going to be her magic of the raven, was that she couldn't die because she'd come back as a ghost or something, but no, then it just turns out she's immortal. And I didn't know, I, I didn't guess that, even when, like, um, they went and the doctor was like, it's only just a scratch or something. Um, I knew that, like, it wasn't her imagining it when she's like, I probably just imagined it. I knew it wasn't that. I knew there was something up. I didn't know what, though. I didn't know what was going on. And found out and I didn't see that coming, so I really liked that part because I didn't see it coming at all. One thing that I don't like, though, is that the thing that... Gwen can see ghosts was made out to be like a big deal in the first book kind of like it was kind of foreshadowed that it was going to become something and then it never did like I thought that would be the magic of the raven and that would come into the ending or something but it didn't it turned out to be the immortality thing and then something was mentioned that because um Paul and Lucy are her actual parents which I'll discuss in a second Paul and Lucy are her actual parents so she's got the gene on both sides of the family so She's like, something may have happened there. So I thought maybe she has the um, seeing ghost thing and the immortality thing because it comes from both sides. But we never really spoke about that, which I found weird. I was genuinely shocked when we found out that Lucy and Paul were Gwen's real parents. And it was like the scene where she went to her mum and her mum's like, don't be angry at me. And that was a really emotional scene. And like, that was done really well. But the when she actually met Lucy and Paul the first time when she knew they were her actual parents that didn't seem dramatic and emotional enough for some reason to me with the ending I don't know if I like the ending or not because I I was enjoying the whole book like all the whole middle I really enjoyed it but then the ending at the end I was honestly hoping that like sh they would like that um Gwen would let them shoot Gideon and then she would not kill herself like that she would live with it and then Gideon would come back as a ghost because I'm still I was still wanting something to be made of the ghost seeing things so I was hoping Gideon would die come back as a ghost and like float around with immortal Gwen <laughs> and it never happened he he actually turned out to have taken some of the immortality little salt things it should have been like an elixir but it wasn't it was just salts but I don't know about that, um, and then it turned out to actually they had planned that, and when did this happen, when did they plan this? Did I imagine it? Did they plan it? 
like that it was planned wasn't it that Gideon was gonna get, be shot and Gwen would know about it they planned that out and I was like when did this happen this is the this is the thing these books are so short that she has to cut out little bits like that so I don't know then there was that green themed party of Cynthia's emerald green see what you did there but yeah, that was pretty fun. We can walk in and Charlotte's singing paparazzi and she's, I can so picture this like Gideon standing there like, oh god, and Charlotte's drunk and she's like, I will stop until that boy is mine. I can just imagine that because she's drunk and she's talking about these time travel and things and everyone's like, what are you talking about? And there's that guy on the ground, was it Gordon? He's like... I don't know, he was like trying to get her to take her clothes off or something and oh, it's just such a weird scene, like the whole book is all like serious and stuff and then there's just the party scene and I just love it, it's just, it was a nice scene, I liked it a lot. Last thing I want to talk about is the epilogue, I like how that prologue epilogue thing like, you knew, like, you, the first two books, you're like, why is this epilogue prologue from Lucy and Paul's point of view? What's up with this? And then in this book, you find out that it's because they're her parents, and that's pretty clever. But I don't like this epilogue, because it, it was just so weird, and I would have, because, um, they were getting ready to go to, like, a dinner with Gideon and, um... Gwen, I guess, but then we didn't get to see the dinner and it ended with just like some stupid line about the maid and um, it'll take, I'll, I don't think I'll ever get used to this or something and I was like, but it should have ended as like a little family, like they should have ended in like a family hug, that would have been cool, I would have liked that, but still I really really enjoyed this book overall, it was my favourite out of the three. And I think that's like the unpopular opinion. Let me know in the comments which one was your favourite. Um, what did you think about this book? Do you think it could have been longer? Let me know in the comments. Discuss with me. I would love to talk about it with you guys. But that's all I had to say for this book talk. I hope you enjoyed it. And I will see you in my next video. Goodbye.